Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of DadCast. Today, uh, a super duper, pretty special one, if you ask me. Although you probably hear me say that every single episode, but I really, 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 really mean it this time. Uh, Nick, how are you, buddy? We are welcome with Nick, of course, the other man of DadCast. Hang on. Somebody's knocking on my door. Oh, of second. course, Sorry. right during the intro. But all right. <laughs> we'll just keep it going then, man. Just Today on the, the show, uh, we have very special yeah, guests, right. the Nash... Bill Dad's Club. They they highlight the absurdities and hilarious musings of modern dad life as three real national dads, Philip Cordell, Rashad Rayford, and Dean Shortland. Welcome oh. to DadCast, you guys. How are you? Woo! We're great, hey, man. Thank hey, you for hey, having us. Yeah, well, glad to be here. Thank you, man. And this is a great, you know, I love all these Zooms. So we're all five of us apparently in a different location in the world. I'm going to start with you, Philip. Where are you at this today? I'm in East Nashville, which is where I reside, where All right. I was raised, holding Dean? it down. Thank God I'm back in Nashville, Tennessee. All right. Rashad? Nashville, okay. Tennessee. All right. So you're all back home. Um, as I mentioned off the hey. air, I'm currently – I'm sorry, Nick, go ahead. Well, actually, since these guys are all in Nashville, we need to invite them out July 8th to join us at Johnny Cash's Ranch. If that's something they'd be into, I'd be more than happy yeah. to explain what that is coming up in just a few minutes. Exactly. Before we get any farther, uh, I want right. to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, this episode is brought to you in part locally by Fox 26 KMVU and Great Notion Brewing out of Portland, Oregon. Download the Great Notion app and get cold beer, amazing beer, the best beer in the history of the world, delivered cold to your door. Put in the code DADCAST10, get yourself a nice little discount. Gentlemen, the very first question, and I don't care what order we go into. It's a rite of passage here on DadCast. Are you dads? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 100%. God, I'm a dad. And how many kids do you guys have between the three of you? I think 20? seven. Seven? Seven is the right yeah. answer, right? Wow. Yeah. Seven. You, you guys ready for this fun fact? Mm -hmm. That guy right there, Nick Martin. By himself is working on number seven right now. Am I allowed Nick. to announce that, Nick? Yeah, well, yeah, we can announce that we're working on it. We can't announce the results of the work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always <laughs> putting in that work. That's right. <laughs> work for work in progress. Right? Dean knows. Yeah. I, and this man oh, is yeah, bringing in another baby. Well, I'm right. 47 now, but seven kids? Man, yeah. you're a gladiator. Yeah. Well, I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> so, right. Like I was all done. Like my so I have a uh, five older kids and the the youngest being 15. So like we were almost done, almost out of the house. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I can travel, we can do stuff. I met my wife about eight years ago and we're like taking trips, doing whatever we want. She's like, Hey, I want to have a baby. I don't have any kids. I'm like, shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So uh we, uh, we went through the whole IVF process and had our first baby a couple years ago. And then now she's like, I want another one. I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> let's talk about this. We just went through a pandemic. What are, what are we doing? So uh, <laughs> here we are. And uh, yeah, stay tuned to DadCast because we'll announce the results of this work soon. Very, very gotcha. soon. Right on, man. Right on. I, awesome. I applaud you. So Nashville Dads Club. Um, Let's get a little background. I'm assuming this whole thing was birthed, uh, for lack of a better way to put it, from your all experiences as dads. Is that is that accurate? Yep. That's correct. Yep. That's correct. We, we made a, a TV pilot here in Nashville back in, uh, we shot it 2018, came out 2019 called Prince of Pools. Uh, and it, it premiered the Nashville Film Fest, had a little traction. Uh, I wrote that and Dean and I was looking for the best of the best in Nashville. Uh, and you ran and out Dean, of options. <laughs> no, and you know, Dean and Rashad are two of the absolute finest actors that Nashville has to offer. They've done tons of work. Uh, they get, they still get tons of work. And uh, and coming off the heels of that, I was just hanging with Rashad. We were talking about what what we might work on next, uh, and we were like, man, let's just write what we know, you know. And so that's where uh, that's where this idea for Nashville Dads Club came together. We set up a writer's room, uh, invited some friends out. Dean was out for that. And uh, and we've just been rolling ever since, man. Now, has that is there really much acting involved when it comes to Nashville Dads Club? 
Yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming you guys are just going off experiences and, and events that have happened and the trials and tribulations of, uh, you know, the kids. Sure, sure. Well, there definitely is always find that nugget of truth, right? Uh, and that's what we're looking for, I think, as actors. But it's not, you know, for anybody that hasn't seen the show, it is a narrative uh, piece of work, you know, so it looks like TV. We shoot it like TV. We've got a full art department grips, you know, the whole shebang. Uh, so so it looks like a, a sitcom or a single cam comedy show that you would see on Hulu or Netflix or whatever. Right. Um, so from that perspective, yeah, you know, we try to dig into the characters a little bit and bring some acting work to it. Uh, but it is absolutely based on on our real life experiences, I would say. Would, would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Hey, Rashad, how how many kids do you have in particular and how what are their ages? I have four. So I have a eight year old, uh, almost nine year old, uh, seven year old, almost three year old and a four month old. Oh, man. So you are not getting any sleep and you haven't for about 10 years. What is sleep? That's a real thing. That's something people do. Right? <laughs> sleep when you're dead. Right. Exactly. Right. That's um, it. I personally, I have a 17, almost 18 year old going on 30, uh, hmm. an 11 year old son and my baby girl eight will be nine uh, in like five days. Oh, so wow. I sympathize and know exactly where you are coming from, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Dean? So if he's got four, one of you two only has one kid. Is that you? All right. Boy or girl, age, names, all that good stuff. I have a girl, and in the show, we call her Daisy, and in real life, her name is Daisy. Um, she is, she emphatically wants the world to know that she is four and three quarters now. <laughs> <laughs> but she's about to turn five at the end of August. Um, she is, she's a pocket rocket. There's no other word to describe her. She yeah, and so you mentioned earlier that so you're 47. You and I are the same age. Um, one kid that it kind of got a late start. Was there yeah. was there never it, did it just never work out that way? And just the chips finally fell where they may. How did that work out? Becoming an, for lack of a better way to put it, an old dad. Yeah, no, I mean that's that's fair to say. Um, I I just wanted to let fate play its hand, honestly. And um, we. My wife and I have been together now for 10 years this year. Um, when we first got together, my wife didn't want to be a mom. And I had to do some thinking about that. She wanted me to spend some time, and you know, working out if that really mattered to me. And ultimately for me, I was more concerned about the journey with her than it was about procreating. I would have procreated beforehand had that happened or adopted or fostered. I mean, I've always had an, a yearning to parent in some capacity, whether it was my kid or just being the local guy who gave a damn. Um, I was a youth group leader for a long time. Um, so, yeah, but she had a change of heart, uh, you know, around six years ago and said, I want to be a mom. I think I'm... I want to be a mom. And I was said, yeah, I mean, thousand percent. Yeah. And we got pregnant very fast. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Well, a youth group leader doing mushrooms, huh? Well, no, that, well, that time I was, um, I was actually heavily involved in uh, the church uh, for a number of years. So, um, but, you know, I mean, the work, whether I was in the church or not, it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I think of mushroom. I don't really think of mushrooms as a drug anyway. I think it's a medicine that's very beneficial when used in an appropriate setting under the guidance of a professional. Exactly. And for everyone good. listening or watching, uh, we actually spoke off air. Um, he most recently, Dean, you were in, where was it? Uruguay? Alon, Ecuador. Ecuador, Uruguay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh doing a, having a cool little trip so so that's where that <laughs> so to speak <laughs> excuse me that's where that came from yeah all right philip it's you're on you're on the clock now two yep. kids what are their ages two kids aged uh five and seven born march 6th uh, and then two years later uh march 7th so things very very regular at the yeah. Cordell household it we seems like you and wife schedule. have a routine yeah we keep a tight schedule <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, okay. man, and it, 
it's a blast, dude. It's a trip. You know, it's the best. It's the coolest ride I've ever been on. And I've had friends tell me, oh, you know, when they were babies, well, when they get older, it'll be more fun. I have really enjoyed every stage uh, yeah, of, it, of the thing because it's all so fleeting. You know, when I was yeah. up at, at, at 2 a.m. bottle feeding a baby man, like I tried to stay in the moment with the realization that like this is a kind of a precious memory that, you know, I won't get to do this most of my life. This is such a small period of time really helped me appreciate even the tough times because, man, they're all so, uh, so fleeting. Yeah, that's one yeah. thing I, I find myself I have uh, difficulties with. I mean, I'm a busy guy. And mm-hmm. as, as all of us dads know, um, we it, it, typically, you know, not every time, but typically it's up to us to carry that load of caring and responsibility, whether it be emotional and financial. Um, so there's a lot of time away from them, you know, because you're working. And I struggle with that a lot. I was I actually made a, a post on uh, social media a couple of days ago, I took a picture of my little girl in the back seat singing her little ass off it. And I took a picture of in the rear view mirror and I thought, my God, you know, she's going to be nine years old next week. And that nine years old, that nine years is, is a blink. And then mm-hmm. I thought, what's the next blink? She's going to be 18 and an adult. And, right. and it's just, and I got, I, I almost started crying right there, but at the same time I was super duper proud and it just the emotion of that. And you ain't kidding, man, holding on to those things. I just, I, and, I, and I ended that post with, I am holding on to these last couple of years of childhood with dear life because, mm-hmm. you know, until we, are, we become granddads, anyone granddads yet? I think Nick's is the closest. <laughs> um, you don't get those back. Yeah. You don't. You do not get them back. So dads, that's one of the most important things in the world, man. Got to be there and uh, be present. And one of my favorite sayings, Nick, you know this one, it only takes a moment to make a moment. Agreed. Uh, Tell me I'm wrong. All right. Who got right. a little deep there? Well, <laughs> guys, I'm so animated. I'm just so I'm in Dude. Vegas and I get I get a little animated when I and I talk with my hands a lot. I apologize. So, so I gotta share some exciting news. Good. I would rather stop very, talking. I know you should shut up. The wife <laughs> the wife and I had our very first without the baby overnight stay in a hotel last night. You know what uh, sucks? I woke up every 45 minutes wondering where the baby's at. How is he doing? Uh, yeah. I couldn't enjoy the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so, no, the I didn't get any sleep last night. Nick, you, know, you eat, so you don't take the baby and you wake up and have a problem, or you do take the baby to Vegas and you still have problems. Yeah. You know, I can, I can definitely tell you I'm not as sore as I was when I took the baby to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't sweated as, as much for sure. All right. Rashad, I got a question for you, man. I'm going to take you yeah. back. I mean, it was about nine and a half, ten years ago, give or take. And uh, mm-hmm. that fateful day when the lady came up to you and said, guess what? I'm pregnant. You're going to be a daddy. Can you remember right. the emotions that went through your head that day? Yeah, um, it was a lot because we had been trying for like a year to get pregnant. And um, so we were it was one of those things like it was she kind of surprised me with it. Right. It was a, a, a card and she was like, there's a card for you on the counter. I don't know, whatever. And like I went and opened it and, you know, the sonogram picture was there. And I really was kind of like, I don't know. I think I missed it. Like, I think I opened the card and it flipped. And so, like, I started reading the card and I was like, oh, OK, cool. And then she was like, you don't see the picture. And I was like, no, because it was white. Right. Because it flipped. So it was like it matched the color of the right. other side of the card. So I didn't see it. And so I was like, I flipped it and I was like, what? And then like I just I got like super emotional. You know what I mean? And we both just kind of sat there. She started crying. And I was like, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it was super emotional, man. And then our oldest son, he was born um, two months early. So he was in the NICU. He, he was born at uh, two pounds and 13 ounces. Uh, so he was in the NICU for uh, about 40 days. And so like, again, first kid, you know, uh, you know, not being able to take him home and just hoping that he would be all right. I mean, we knew the wife had preeclampsia. Uh, and so we knew like what was happening uh, kind of like at the last minute. Um, they, they rushed her to the hospital and uh, like on like a Tuesday and she was there for like seven days and then she had the baby. And, you know, they're like trying to be calm. But like I'm an actor, so like I can tell when people are like trying to be like, 
and but I can tell like they're BSing, and I'm like, yo, like just this what's real. What tell us what's really going to, you know, what do we need to prepare for? And they were like, well, we're not 100 percent sure. And then the day of the delivery, she was able to have a vaginal birth, thankfully, and um. You know, it was so many people in the hospital room, you know, and it was just like all these nurses on standby and they were just prepared, had oxygen, had all these things. And, you know, it's just like you're trying to enjoy the experience of, of, you know, your wife, you know, delivering your first child and hoping that she's okay, hoping that the baby's okay. And you can see everybody in the room is super nervous and super tense. Um, And they're just like, well, you know, he's probably going to come out and he's probably not going to be, you know, breathing and just they're trying to prepare us. Right. And then. My wife pushes and all these things happen and then he pops out and he screams at the top of his lungs and all the nurses are just like, why are we here? Like, he's fine. You know what I mean? Um, And so he's he's been he's been great ever since. Like he just needed to gain weight. That was the whole reason that he had to stay in the NICU, but he never had issues with breathing, never had any other issues at all, thankfully. Um, So, yeah, man, like that first one was just like the like it was the most pressure, but also like some of the best memories of just like you know, wow, like this is our first, our first kid. And, you know, and like I said, now he's about to be nine in a couple months. And it's just like, dude, like, do you understand like what we had to go through, what your mom had to go through to get you here? You know what I mean? And it's just like, kids are just like, oh yeah, it's all good, whatever. I'm cool. Like, you know, but yeah, it's so, yeah, man, it was an amazing moment. I don't find that they're, they really truly will ever understand until Mm -hmm. they're much, much, much older. I mean, like our age, when they right, have kids, sure. I think once they yeah. have kids, then they go, oh, I get you know, it. Same with me. You know, I didn't realize how much of a prick I was to my parents until <gasps> my yeah, my kids, right. they can be little a-holes. We know that, but I love mm-hmm. them and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So is kid two, three and four any different for you or completely different or? Uh, OK, so kid two was different because she surprised me again. Uh, <laughs> we were just having like a conversation and she was like, oh yeah, and we're probably just something, something, something. And so she had mentioned like something about another, like a baby, something baby wise, but that didn't match up with like our first son. And I was just like, what are you talking about? And she was like, oh yeah, we're, we're pregnant. And I was like, what? You know? So, um, and there are my, my two boys are, uh, they're 20 months apart. So they're pretty close together in age. Um, and so, you know, for me as a, like, I was just like, okay, cool. We got two sons. Like, I'm good. Like we don't have to have, we're good to go. And my wife was just like, no, I want, you know, I want to have more, you know, I want to have more children. You know, I want to try to have another boy because my wife wanted all boys early on. Right. And so, uh, we tried again. And of course we had a, we had a girl and, you know, we weren't, we were just like, oh, we, and so then it got real. Cause now it's like, wait a minute, like I'm a boy dad, like, I can just throw him across the room. I can put him in the headlock. You know, I can do all the fun dad stuff, right? But it's just like a girl. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. Like, so I was really like shaken and nervous because I was like, I don't know. I'm I don't know nothing about this, you know. And so it, it took it took a while, like even holding her and just like she was like, "Are you serious right now?" I was like, "I can't. I don't want to break it." Like, I, you know, even though I had two boys, <laughs> it was just it was just different. Um, but you know, she's like, um, you know, she's our, you know, she's our regulator. Like she, she keeps everybody in check, you know, as far as the boys, the guys, you know, so it's good for my wife to kind of have that, that extra, uh, that little backing. And then our last, our last child is a boy. So we got three boys, one girl and yeah, man, it's, it's been great. But now it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a machine. Now the older boys help with stuff. And so, you know, like those commercials that you see where you're wiping everything down with the first kid and, you know, doing all this stuff and, have everybody bundled up really tight and all these things and now with the like the the more children you have it's just like oh yeah uh, go stay with your grandparents it's fine like we just drop them off at the grandparents house now we don't really like wait an hour to make sure everything's good so it's it's, it's, it's a lot but it's, it's cool man it's really fun yeah I, I hear you on that the boy thing my thing was the heisman trophy with hold him as a baby you know right and then but that girl and other guy, guys tell me i'm wrong I don't love my one kid more than the other, but something about that baby girl just, it, oh, you know what I'm, I will jump yeah. in, in front of raining hellfire and fury of bullets uh, to protect that little thing. You know, the boys, they can protect themselves. It's our job. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and tell you that. Yeah, you're right. Until they hit 16. Yeah. Well, then, I know that too. Year old boy and a 16 year old girl is completely different. The 16-year-old mm. boy is still your homie. 16-year-old girl, she hates us, man. 
<laughs> it's awful. Yeah, be, be be careful, guys. It's coming. It's it's and, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just, I mean, no. they know everything. You know nothing. There's no possible way in the world that all of our life's experience combined could ever match the fact of what she's going through right now. And mm-hmm. it's it's tough, you know. I'm not and looking just because she to wants that. to date a guy just like you, it doesn't mean you tell her no. Like, but dad, he's just like you. Exactly. Don't date him. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be going to the jungles and doing mushrooms soon. Don't do it. You know, I'm don't. <laughs> Dane, I'm sorry. I think oh, I you're think fine. I, I'm, I'm uh, really an open book. So I think I, that's what the title of this episode is going to be. I mean, something to do with <laughs> hallucinogenics, you know, whatever. Well, you know, full disclosure on that, part of why I went to a plant medicine retreat was for my family. It was for my daughter. I, I'd struggled with anxiety for a long time and it knocked it out. Was that the reason for going? I mean, that was that the top of the list to knock out that anxiety and try a, a different method of, uh, you know? It was definitely one of the things I needed to heal, yeah. Um, I I had, a you know, some really beautiful revelations because I'm always a, a never-be-late type of person, must be on time, get out the door, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, pardon me. What the hell are you fuck. doing? It's okay. <laughs> yeah, what everyone, the, it's what everyone do a fuck. Let's just get out of the way. Put some pants on. Get out the door. You've got to go to school, type of person. But what I realized uh, while I was on that trip was, I'm allowing my emotions and my mindset to be dictated by an, a clock, by an arbitrary time made by someone else who decided this is the time my kid needs to be at school. Now I understand there's some practicalities attached to that. Yeah, but. It it was dictating my my relationship flow with my wife and my child. And so I'd be in a bad mood getting her off to school because she wasn't cooperating. And at that point, I'd left her with negative energy. And to me, that that was a massive thing. Just going, I was not present for my kid. I was just, I was more concerned about the person, whoever the hell that was, that decided my kid needs to be there by 845 than I was the welfare of my child. And when I throw perspective on that, yeah, it'll change things. You're making me think too, because that's one of my main struggles every single morning. Yeah. Thankfully, mom got that it. task this morning. You know, she didn't know what to do. That's dad's job. And daddy's gone for a week. So I, I got a call at 730. How do you get her up? I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so a- so after this trip and after, you know, going through what you did, how how is how is your mindset different now going through that? Because, I mean, you still have got to get her there on time, right? You still need to do all the same things. Is it just a mindset now? It is a mindset shift. My kid's going to be late sometimes. Yeah. But I'm more concerned about her welfare than I am about pissing off a teacher because she's coming minutes late. Yeah. And and isn't it ridiculous? I've gotten a couple of those letters, too. She's one week. She was late three out of the five days. And we're talking minutes, okay? Just a couple of minutes. You know, and sorry, I wanted to feed my daughter breakfast instead of getting her to school on time. And, in, you know, there, there's going to be repercussions for the parents. I was like, what are you talking about? What are you going to do? Throw me in jail because my daughter is still <laughs> know, late to school this week? You. I mean, I'm more concerned about my kid being upset and hurt and right. leaving me. Uh, in, you know, the thing is, if I kept that path happening, my kid's going to end up with anxiety. Mm hmm. I don't want that for her, you know. Um, I, so I don't really. Um, so this past, you know, I've only really, I've only been home for twenty four hours. Full disclosure. Um, <laughs> you just got back. Yeah, on twenty hours of sleep. It was a hell flight, but that's fine. Um, I'm here, and I'm glad. Um, but with relation to that particular topic, uh, listening to my inner voice and realizing I need to trust my kid to figure what out what she needs and she's going to tell me what she needs and sometimes it's going to take me guiding obviously and just making sure that she's you know um understanding that there are important things that need to occur but um i'm not going to jeopardize my relationship with her over a fucking clock i applaud you for that if i had my fancy schmancy audio board here there would be applause happening right now (laughs) Philip, what uh, difficulties have you had being a father? 
Well, uh, I mean, I can tell you the the birth of our first son. My, my wife is five feet tall. We got a doula. We were going to do it all natural. My wife's short. Our son was a normal, you know, was a, a large baby boy. And so that went from our, uh, you know, on paper birth plan. Here's what it's going to be to getting smacked in the face with reality. And it was, uh, you know, it was not at all what we planned. And the epidural was hugely helpful and successful. Uh, and uh, and it was still a difficult labor, but but we got through it. And so right off the jump there, we kind of set the tone right. for, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and then for, for our second child, we uh, we went the, the C-section route. And that was uh, for us just made a lot of sense so that we could bypass, uh, you know, some of that traumatic experience that, that, you know, I mean, it was a, it was a trip, you know, to, to Rashad's point where you're in there and like people are freaking out and, you know, and you're just like, how am I supposed to be reacting or acting? And I don't know. Right. Um, but you know, the, the, the beauty with the, I don't know if you guys have had a baby by C-section. Anybody, has anybody had a baby by C-section? Not, per, not, not personal. Uh, yeah. 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 Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, it's, it's a wreck shop on me. Uh, no, you know, they're like the nice thing here is that there's the window, you know, so so we're going to make it, it feel as much like a, like a natural childbirth as possible. So we will, you know, we will deliver the baby, then we'll present the baby through the, the plastic window to you, you know, and like in my mind, I'm like, man, this is going to be, you know, circle of life, Lion King, circle, yeah. you know, and instead they're like, oh, are you ready? And I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. And I got my thing on and they unzip it. And, the you know, my daughter who is, one of the, the lights of my life. And she, it's like alien. She's like, uh, up yes. against the plastic. Ah, and she's all cheesy and everything and bloody. And I'm like, oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> like, I you know, just when you got oh, expectations man. versus reality. My, uh, my yeah. lady had a uh, water birth for my little, okay. my youngest. So she's on all fours in a giant spa and I'm in the water. I was the first to be able to catch and she's still underwater at this time. And then mom rolled over and she's still underwater. And I brought her out and I had the first look and I said, I have a purple Asian baby. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. Huh? Put her on the chest, wiped out the mouth, first breaths. But that was uh, fairly painless. I mean, it, cool? I mean, I mean, I don't want to say painless. Yeah. Honey, you watch back this, <laughs> listen to this. You know what I mean? You know, in comparisons to other people we know, your labor and birth was fairly straightforward and simple. But we yeah, got on line. All of us did. <laughs> really? Yeah, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> ooh, crazy, crazy, man. OK, you know what? I'm going to I'm going I'm to veer off. Nick, you got anything before we start talking about Nashville? No, I was talking about Nashville. OK, good. So check it out, you guys. We are hosting a dad cast live. Um, event July 8th in Nashville at Johnny Cash's farm, which I hear is just outside of Nashville somewhere mm -hmm. where he resided. And he said it was the center of his universe. Jason Michael cool. Carroll's performing. There's going to be a premiere of the Bay house movie, which includes stars. Uh, what's uh, his name? Barry Corbin, Barry Corbin. He was in Yellowstone. Um, just an old school I actor. I think uh, he's like 187 years old. Um, <laughs> sorry, Barry. You know, yeah, right. um, but it's going to be a Orange County event. will be will be there, and uh, um, yeah. we would. I mean, if we can figure out figure it out, I mean, Nashville Dads Club being a part of that, whether it's just bringing out the family and enjoying the event, or mm -hmm. actually participating in some form or fashion, maybe during the podcast we guys have you up for a quick little roundabout. I don't know, um, but. We're going to be in your neck of the woods, and it's going to be a great event, and it's all benefiting Safe Homefront, which is um, a uh, you know helps veterans uh, who've you know come back and have you know got issues, PTSD and whatnot. Um, so this is your formal invite if you're available to uh, come hang out with us. It, you know, if oh. it's a chance, it'd be a pleasure. Yeah, I we'll mean, Johnny Cash. Hello. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Johnny Cash. Right. Man, Nick, I get that about right? Yeah, yeah. We'll just put you guys on the guest list. Um, I'll shoot an email out. Just we'll need to know how many. And you guys will just get like the VIP, like pre-show guest list, all that kind of stuff. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On on topic, my next door neighbor is well, up until I moved to this house, was Johnny Cash's granddaughter. Oh wow. 
Very yeah, cool. I, I keep interacting with the Cash family all the time. <laughs> Weirdly enough, um, I worked on the Johnny Cash Museum, helped get that off the ground, yes. and a few other things. So uh, it would be an honor. That's we'd cool. love to have you guys out, man. Awesome. That'd be great. Um, <clears throat> also, planting the seed now since uh, we're actually recording and I have visual proof of the answer to this question. <laughs> uh, we do a uh, annual Father's Day episode. We recorded a couple weeks prior, so it's coming up real soon. Um, Nick, what's that date? Uh, June 5th, I believe at 2 p.m. If we you guys are this. available um, during that time, whether it's all three of you, one of you, two of you, whatever the case, we're going to do another one of these, except there's going to be probably about 20, 30 of these squares, and we're talking all walks of dad life, whether it be Mr. Movie Star, Mr. Sports Star, my next door neighbor, whatever, just doing a Father's Day episode, talking about Father's Day, wishing each other happy Father's Day, and just putting that positive quick thing out. It's real short and sweet. We're going to try to make it like 20, 30 minutes. We'd love to have you on for that as well. We're on the calendar. All right. And Nick, my uh, he's, he'll send out emails and whatnot, but okay. All right. Yeah. Why are we even talking about this during a podcast? Okay. <laughs> Let's... <laughs> Let's talk about Nashville Dad's Club and your kids. It's a it's a inception-y type question. Do any of your children realize at this point yet that dad is kind of a big deal, kind of a movie star, kind of a TV guy? Uh, have they hit that age yet? And if they have, have they taken advantage of you? <laughs> My kids have uh to a certain extent, like they um they see me, you know, of course on Dad's Club, they they are, they've also seen me on commercials and stuff. And so uh um they're kind of like, oh yeah, you know, so they, they Google me. My son is at, a, at the age now where he's Googling me. And so he did it one day for a school project for some reason and uh kind of embarrassed me because he was telling all his friends and his teacher, like, oh yeah, my dad's he's famous and he's that out, and I'm like be quiet. No, I'm not. <laughs> but uh so yeah, so that's pretty hilarious. And now my daughter, she calls me by my I have a, a, a poet stage name. So I'm Rashad the poet as a um in the, the hip hop world. And so she calls me that all the time now. So it's kind of funny just when I'm coming home, instead of saying daddy, now she's like, Rashad the poet. <laughs> so it's kind of hilarious. So yeah, they they've kind of realized it. And yeah, they have they definitely try to uh you know manipulate us and think that uh our dad is is rich because they want uh my son showed me a uh a, 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 a four-wheeler or i'm sorry a, a power wheel the other day uh he's like it's only fifteen hundred dollars yeah, i was like right. oh yeah let me go ahead and just pull that out for you real quick go ahead so yeah so yeah it's That's pretty funny. funny my my daughter Dad, you guys have almost 7,000 subs on YouTube now. Can you buy me that $1,000 race car for my birthday? It's like, honey, I don't think you quite understand. Yeah. Do you YouTube's <laughs> the smallest. That's our smallest one of all the subscription-based social media stuff. But yeah, yeah it's Dude, my, my 15-year-old like, hey, you guys had Brett Young on. Can you buy me? He wants a, like a five, a six or $7,000 quad. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't. Right. We don't have Joe Rogan money yet. <laughs> we're not there. <laughs> my 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 wife is incredibly difficult to impress. Um, right, she, I have that same problem. Yeah, she doesn't. <laughs> I like. I oh, be on. I, I was on a series called Dolly Parton's Heartstrings a few years ago, and my wife is obsessed with Dolly Parton. She was like, "Oh, cool." I'm like, "That's all I get." Right. And my daughter, <laughs> my daughter follows suit. She is. Like she's dramatic and hands and everything like me, but just like her mom, nah, they do not give a damn that I'm on TV. <laughs> They're just happy <laughs> if I'm a good dad and I'm a good husband. That's all I care about. So. And that's a good thing too. That's that's yeah, that's yeah. that's probably you know that's the most important thing. The only time I ever impressed my lady with you know let me give you a backstory, you guys. I've uh, worked in radio where I live for gosh two decades now, um, all the way bottom of the ladder to being the program director of the number one classic rock station in the area. Um, so during that time, I've interviewed and gone to a lot of concerts and lots of meet and greets, hosted them, et cetera, et cetera. Normally, she doesn't really give a crap, a rat's ass, but she'll come along and play nice. But there happened to be one show with the Hollywood Vampires about five years ago, and Mr. Johnny Depp was in town. And let's just say... That interaction 
She, take, she, she kissed him. He asked if it was okay. And she asked me, and I said, absolutely. You're going home with me. Um, the next month or two, it was, you know, she was on cloud nine and because I was able to give that to her. But aside from the Johnny Depp incident, I like to call it. And now that's something completely different <laughs> these days, uh, but right? it's what about, well, perfect timing, right? <laughs> right? Johnny, I'm on your scene, man. I got you, boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah uh, mine, is, mine is TJ Lavin for for my wife. Like that's been like the highlight of anybody she's gotten to meet through the podcast or any concerts I've done. Is we're down in Vegas for her birthday in February, and we got to hang out with TJ Lavin for a few minutes. So that was like she's like a huge MTV The Challenge fan, and has made me watch every single Challenge episode ever. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> did you just Can get I a text message from real quick? Story? Yeah. Breaking so, news. Breaking. Literally as I speak. Yeah. My I, I came up here with a friend of mine who recently got divorced. So he's he's having a he's having a I wouldn't say a rough time of life, but he could be better. And he asked me if I wanted to go to Vegas with him this week. And that's why I'm here. I he's not a big gambler, but <laughs> as we spoke earlier, I am. And I showed him this one machine and said that particular thing. It's my favorite machine. It's going to hit sooner than later. And of course, when I'm up here hanging out with you guys, <laughs> the son of a bitch hit it. He just won 1300 bucks, got a hand pay. Oh, right. so, uh, That's so great. He, you know, was, he needed that. JP, yeah, he, he did, but that. that was supposed to be mine. I showed him it. <laughs> <laughs> you it passed on the good, the good mojo, man. So who is the, right. in, in, in your line of work and what you guys have been doing, who's, in your opinion, I'm going to ask you, Phil, the f- most famous person you have ever met or interacted with? Uh, I don't know. You know, I, uh, I had taken, uh, this is going to sound real, whatever. Uh, I'm in for whatever. <laughs> I'm real douchey. But once upon a time, I got to tell Samuel L. Jackson in, in an airport in Milan, how much I appreciated his masterclass on acting. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it just Tell happened him. to be, you know, he was there and, and I happened to see him and I just taken this class. I was like, dude, you're an excellent teacher. He's like, everybody else was trying to hit him up for random stuff. And I was just like, hey, man, you're an excellent teacher. I really appreciate that. And Did I, you and tell I him, you know, I appreciate your mother effing skills or anything? Yeah. No, That's but like, I think that he appreciated not just the devil, you guys. Picture. Come here, man. There's my yeah. buddy, Robbie, who just got a handy. So we're gonna we're gonna split that up six ways, Robbie. Is that how this works? Yes. We'll look okay. at the time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, <cool>. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll send you our Venmos, Robbie. <laughs> yeah. So I was I was watching an episode, one of your episodes. You guys had Matt Frazier. Like I was yeah. totally fanboying. Like I'm a huge, huge fan of Matt. Like that dude is amazing. So yeah. how did you make that happen? He's a sweetheart. That's all I want to say on that. What a sweetheart. Nice. Yeah. He's just as cool in person. Uh, I wrote this script with him in mind, thinking no way that he'll do it. I thought he was still training in Cookville with Froning, with Rich Froning. You know, Cookville's Mm -hmm. here about an hour outside of Nashville. I sent it to Matt's uh, manager, Matt O'Keefe. And uh, and they were like, and, you know, he finally got back. He's like, yeah, Matt loves it. He wants to do it. And I was like, cool. He's like, yeah, we just got to work out logistics. I was like, yeah, just drive over from Cookville. No, no big deal. Whatever. <laughs> Not realizing that he actually, you know, moved back to Vermont and lives in Vermont full time. Okay. And so, and so he flew down and and was, you know, we should have assumed, be based on his background, that he would be the most prepared person on set. But this dude knew every line, every nook and cranny. You know, we're showing up. Just like, you know, shooting from the hip. We've done it a few times. That's cool. And Matt, I mean, his attention to detail and his preparation were, uh, you know, it was no surprise that he's as successful as he is. And he was, yeah, yeah, I mean, as Dean just said, he was such a sweetheart and just the coolest dude, just a totally normal dude, right? And yeah, if you watch CrossFit over the past six Mm -hmm. years or whatever, like you've witnessed the greatness, you know, and we've all gotten to ride shotgun on his journey. And I think that's why it was so, it's so cool to see him just being a regular dude. Yeah, he's just an absolute beast, like just insane. Yeah. So you guys recently uh, had your season finale of Nashville Dads Club. What is next? What can we see? Great question. So we do have a bonus episode that we're going to get out there. We shot eight. We've only aired seven. And uh, and so we've got one featuring our, our friend, another fantastic actor here in town, Henry Haggard. One of the best uh, in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's incredible. And I should mention that that uh, Danny Dones directed and, and co-wrote 
you know, all these episodes and, and he's a, a big figure in our, in our world as well. Uh, he and I are working on a feature film, which we'll probably have everybody come and play in. And then uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. And then in the meantime, with dad's club, uh, you know, we're trying to position it to, to develop it into a full length show uh, or to pick up, you know, a, a corporate sponsor that'll help us, you know, run up a, a third season because we just keep trying to elevate and raise the bar for ourselves. So we're, we're ending familiar, up. Nick. I know, right? Yeah, y'all know, y'all get it, right? Hey, if yeah. you ever need a uh, <clears throat> someone to play a radio DJ, I know just the guy. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. I was actually going to suggest if you guys ever need a podcast to talk about dad shit on Nashville yep. Dad's Club. Mm. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, uh, one, right? You're getting yeah. Inception. Again. He got in, exactly. He got Inceptioning. It's the show within yeah. the show within the show. Whoa. Exactly. I love it. Oh. Love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. What? Oh, let's see, Rashad. I have a question for you, and I mm-hmm. want each of you guys to answer this question as well. So I'm sorry for whoever goes third. Um, <laughs> what is one piece of advice that you could impart on any new dad mm-hmm. on being a dad from your experience? Yeah, I think um, just be open to knowing that things are not always what you expect them to be. Um, and so for me, it was just like, again, early on learning, like, oh, my wife is like super tired. She just had a baby. Like as a man, you don't really understand what that means. I think until you get a little bit of time on you and maybe age and maybe more children, you start to realize like, oh, I understand like how tired she really is and how much, how much energy it takes to not only have the baby, but to heal from the baby. Um, and so I would impart just be be patient. You know, you know, you get up and do that extra bottle. You know, I know you're tired too, but like mom is super tired. Like she's more tired than you could ever imagine. So do that extra bottle, do that extra changing. You know, if you can give her a spa day, you know, like just just do those little things to help make her life easier. Because again, you know, if mom is happy, if mom is in a good place, then she really makes everything else work and everybody else is good and so like that would that would be the thing i would say it's just as a, as a new dad just go that extra mile you know to do those extra things to really help amen um we supplemented while we only have one child we have two dogs and we have three cats um <laughs> and so at night trying to go to bed in our house m- my wife is basically pressed like a vice with two dogs and then cats all over her. They just all grab, and then the child shows up. <laughs> so if your wife is doesn't necessarily feel physically affectionate or want to hug you, realize that they've been overtouched all day, every day, and it's nothing about you. And the best thing you can do is free them up and give them space. And, yeah, that's, that's a that's how you can love on them, not necessarily giving them a hug at the time. I, yeah, I find giving my wife free space to breathe is really important in our world. That is one of the first times we've heard that one. Really? Yeah. As far as the advice for new dads, but you ain't kidding. That is no, I mean, they get overtouched. They just get overtouched. It's always mom, 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 woof, uh-huh. woof, meow, meow, all of it. All the time. And I get off light. I mean, she asked for me, sure, but about 5% of the time compared to what my wife Rita goes through. So her independence it, 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 on a daily basis is really taken from her in so many ways. So giving her the space to breathe is really important. There you have it. Philip, what is one piece of advice you could impart on a new dad? And- I'm going to go with that ODAT one day at a time, man. You know, that like when, when you're in the trenches, especially with the, you know, with a young baby and it's like, man, I don't know if I can do this forever. Cool, man. We don't have to do it forever. I just got to get through today, you know, uh, and then being present in that day again to, you know, to, to the earlier point, you know, trying to keep the, my mind on the fact that like life is going to blow right past us, man. And I know people who who've checked out during their fatherhood experience. Thankfully, not my dad, you know, I had a fantastic dad, uh, but I know people that have, and I feel like, you know, we're willingly given up one of the coolest experiences that we as men get to have, you know, I mean, truly this is, 
I mean, it's, it's like the coolest club nobody ever told me about until I was in it being a dad, you know, and now we're in it and it's like, yeah, man, it's, I mean, it's incredible. So just, uh, you know, when it's tough, just the realization that it's going to, you know, this too shall pass. uh, And, and whenever possible, just being present and enjoying this fleeting moment that we get to spend with these tiny creatures. It's, yeah. it's incredible. Love that. Okay, I'm hitting the applause button again for you. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, bow, bow. Hey, Nick. Um, I, I, so I, wise. You, what was that? I, I'm just saying, Rashad, Rashad and Philip. Man, you guys, you guys. I just love your advice. Thank Aww. you. Love you, Dean. Love Dean. Aww, group hug. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. Nick, have you put together a fast five by any chance? I did not. Okay. Then we're just going to randomly ask questions. Uh, this will be fun. Quick, simple, easy. Uh, we'll go Philip, Dean, Rashad in that order. Okay. I'm going to ask Nick's question. What is your go to meal when you have to cook for your kids? Mm, uh, air fryer, chicken nuggies, and canned corn. Dean. Frozen peas, mac and cheese. Rashad. Air fryer, chicken nuggets, quinoa, and kale. Bam! And you guys are doing way better than I do. What do you do? What's my go to? Yeah. DoorDash. Ah. (laughs) They can have whatever the hell they want. Okay, my go to? Macaroni and cheese. Every freaking meal. Even for. Breakfast, it's postural macaroni and cheese. I, hey. I, I don't know how the kid does it. My go-to <laughs> is an Italian sausage with onion, peppers, and cheese in it, sliced up, cut into little squares uh, with a pasta and red sauce or white sauce. It goes with each and garlic bread. It takes me 20 minutes, and they love it. So That's a good that. one. You can have a billboard with anything you want on it. What is it going to be? Nashville Dads Club season two out now. Dean. Get out of your own way. Rashad. Elevate your vibe. Elevate your vibe. You, have you guys been asked these questions before? Because you're freaking nailing it. <laughs> no, All right. No. I don't know if you guys have uh, perused or scanned through any of our other episodes, um, but there's a particular question that I've been asking of guests, whether it be on radio, meet and greets, whatever, like I mentioned earlier. And up until recently, I have yet to find anyone to properly answer this question better than this guy did. Um, I'll let you know who it was and how he answered when we're done. But recently, two guys in a row matched how good of an answer we expected. So no pressure, but here we go. Now, if you've seen the episodes, you know what's coming, and that's fine. But here we go. Philip. Dean, Rashad, in that order, what is one thing you cannot leave the house without? Keys. Wipes. Uh, kiss from my wife. Oh. Yeah! <laughs> and that, sir, is the correct answer. Hey. Rashad, ah, get the it. fourth person in the history of me interviewing people to it correctly goes. answer that. The first time I asked that question and got that answer was a guy by the name of George Thorogood. And oh, yeah? yeah, that was his answer without skipping a beat. He says, I can't without I'm kissing my wife. And I spent 10 years trying to, you know, find someone to match that answer. And I know it can be kind of a trick question. You're thinking something materialistic, but, um, <laughs> and it's okay if you say keys or phone or wipes. I mean, come on, these are necessities. <laughs> I get it. Right. But, that's now the fourth time now in about 15 years total that someone has answered that question, you know, in, in, in regards to something like that. But pretty cool, man. That it's answer, not, uh, not not very bad to the bone, JP, I would just add. <laughs> All right. In terms of, <laughs> I right, think right, Rashad may have seen George the episode. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, there oh, man. All right. So that was for. OK, uh, yeah, you guys can star in a TV show with any actor living or dead. Who's it going to be? <laughs> you look like you're struggling, oh, Philip. Is that a hard one? No, now, now all of a sudden, you hit me with the stumpers, right? Because, I mean, right. you know, in what era? I don't know. I, I would take a young Brando. That'd probably be fun, right? <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm going I'm to narrow it down for you. Any the 90s, that's your era. Yeah. 
the 90s. Oh, 90s, yeah. then, I then probably yeah. Will Ferrell. That would have been a lot of fun. Robin Williams, hands mm. down. Good one. Yep. Uh, man, that's tough. I, I just keep thinking of like comedies. I would love to have been on the Martin show, like on Martin with Martin. Martin. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's a good one. Um, team Smith or Team Brock? Mm. I'm, I'm going to go Chris Rock on that one, man. Just you know, we, we it's do still comedy. a little bit relevant, right? Yeah, we do comedy, and it's I mean it's tough, and I, I think I, I try to see both sides, right? But uh, but I'll probably go with Chris Rock person. I I think Will Smith was in a tough place. He was either going to upset his wife, or he was going to upset Hollywood. It's hard for me to want to spend energy on that. I just want, I hope his heart's good. Yeah. And you know, the, the, the amount of pressure that that man was under that day as well. I, yeah. I can't even imagine. That's why when I asked that question, I'm on both teams, man. Yeah. Or none. He's a good, I think he's, I think he's fundamentally a good man. Oh yeah. you will make me some Will Smith. Yeah. Everybody else got to take both. <laughs> that, that, it, it is an option. What do you, you think? Know, there's no I rules here. <laughs> are you guys yeah. uh, Star Wars fans? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you excited for what's happening in like four days, three days? Obi Wan, Disney Plus, Friday. Obi Wan. Yeah, Friday. Just, you should have just led with Hayden Christensen. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. I didn't look at internet or phone or anything while I was in Ecuador. Um, so I'm missing news a lot. So the, 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 a, the new Obi Wan Disney series which is set 10 years after the events of Revenge of the Sith and 10 years before Star Wars, the original movie, uh, premieres this Friday. And uh, it's I'm just looking forward to it. I'm a super big, fat nerd in disguise. Yeah. And I, I spent way too much money in Disneyland building lightsabers with my son when we went, and so he's all into it now. And I also got him into Legos. What? There's a good question. What are some things your kids like too much that are way too expensive, but we can't tell them that. Mm. Yeah, Lego is a is a great example, right? Because it seems like, oh, it's building his brain, it's so good for him, and then you just keep building up and you're like, where's this going? Dad, I want the nine hundred dollar Millennium Falcon. Territory? Yeah, yeah, dude. Right. Ugh. I've yeah. I, yeah. My kids into LOL surprise dolls. Mine was <laughs> too. And they drive that I mean they they shit me to tears. There's pieces everywhere uh-huh shape. so i find uh many shoes and sunglasses and wigs that that are everywhere. like they're they're barely the size of your fingernail <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. And I, I found a couple of my dog's poop too just if we're going to full disclosure keep it yeah. real i'm oh, trying yeah. to get her into something yeah. a little bit more get outside and play type so mm-hmm. All right, you guys, we are getting close to the end of our time. I want um, once again to rehab. You know what? I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I was supposed to do earlier. I'm going to hit this button, and I'm going to look at the show notes that were sent to us. So let me see if I could come up with Nashville Dad Club season premiere episode. Getting the night away features actor John Sewell and launched on March 31st. Uh, you can watch it on their YouTube channel. Now would be a good time, you guys. Um, how can anyone listening or watching this particular episode right now find Nashville Dads Club, uh, whether it be YouTube, social media? Yeah, we are at uh, everywhere at Nashville Dads Club. So find us on Instagram, find us on Facebook, and yes, find us on YouTube uh, at either slash Nashville Dads Club or at Nashville Dads Club. And we've got, you know, we're building followings a- across the board. They're on all of them. So different episodes pop on different platforms. And it's interesting to see, as I'm sure you guys have experienced, right? Oh, yes. And then yeah. I'm I'm at uh, at, at philip.cordell on the gram. <laughs> the gram? Did you guys get stickers for your back windows on your cars? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have deal with that. Uh, no. I don't know, no. but I did. Did you? Yeah. Well, I've got them. What's the deal? It's just to to uh, get the name out there to, to to put it in front of people's faces, right? Yeah, I mean, all, all the cool kids are doing it. And I bought us a billboard when we first started that said "Dadcast," the number one parenting podcast in the world, on the busiest awesome. street in Medford, Oregon. And this keep was mind. what, like day three? Yeah, day keep three. Mind, we had maybe two episodes podcast. in the can at that point. Were you mm. happy with that ROI on that on that billboard? I'm pretty happy with it. I I think it 
I manifested to where we're at now. Awesome, we, man. we couldn't know. <laughs> we could have gone down in flames, and it, it would have been just as awesome. <laughs> look at us now, gentlemen. Just look at Number us. Number one parenting podcast in the world. I mean, that's, that's right. Nick, that, that was smart, man. I've got an MBA, and, man, I don't know if I would have, that would have popped in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know. I, I just didn't feel right lying to, like, my entire community. But, you know, <laughs> I, I just I really don't want that. everybody to know I'm a really shitty dad. That's I was like, you know what? <laughs> and that's why we have this podcast with amazing guests like the guys from Nashville Dads Club. So if you happen to be a less than desirable dad and you're looking to get better or you need advice on such things, uh, that's what we're here for. And you can go back in all the episodes. Uh, here are three prime examples of what I would consider pretty gosh darn good dads, man, who are doing it right. The dads from Nashville Dads Club, Phil Cordell, Dean Shortland, and Mr. Rashad Rayford. Gentlemen, can I also plant a seed to do a part two episode? Because yes, I feel like there's a whole lot more we need to talk about. Uh-huh. Yes. yes. We're out here. So for everyone listening and watching, this is part one and just the introduction to Nashville, Nashville Dads Club and DadCast. Uh, everyone watching, thank you so much for tuning in and all that good stuff. We appreciate you. If you're on the YouTube, like it, hate it, whatever. We're fine with it if you hate it. Leave us comment, a comment. Comment, subscribe, yeah. all that good stuff. Make sure you check out Nashville Dads Club. Gentlemen, we really hope to see you in less than two months in your neck of the woods hanging out on Johnny Cash's property. And uh, yeah, man, thanks for coming on DadCast. We appreciate you. Thanks, thanks for having you. us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Hey. And for everyone watching, we'll catch you on the very next episode. Have a great rest of your day. See ya.